This video is going to discuss the typical oil flow through the system of a Lycoming engine. This particular engine is a 0540. But most aircraft oil systems, if it's a wet sump, will start in the sump assembly. So this is located on the lowest portion of the engine usually, plus it's a vertical engine. So your oil, when you pour it into the engine, sits inside of the sump here. From the sump, it goes in through this port at the bottom, lowest part of the sump, through a channel, goes up this tube. Inside of this housing here is a screen. It's your suction screen. So if you look down in that hole, you can see that brass fence mesh material down there. That is accessible through the sump here, through this bolt. This particular one has a sump oil heater, but there may just be a plug here. So that gives you access to that screen. So oil gets brought in from the sump, through this tube, through the pre-screen, or the suction screen. From there it goes into this hole. It travels up the back side of the engine in the accessory case. So here, so leaves the sump from this hole, goes into this hole on the lowest part of the accessory case. From there, it travels up this channel into the oil filter housing. This housing has provisions for a cartridge oil filter. It also includes this assembly which is the vernotherm. The vernotherm job is to, when the oil is cold, this stays closed, forcing oil to go right into the engine versus through the oil cooler. So if the oil is hot, this opens, the heat opens that, causes the oil to go through the oil cooler and then back to the pump. So from here, from the oil housing, Oil goes through that port, travels down a channel in the accessory case to here, then it turns and goes to here. This part of the accessory case, there's a uh, and cap on it. This is where most often your oil pressure is taken from. So this would go to a, a line that goes to the instrument on the back side of the accessory case. So to follow it again, oil leaves the sump here goes up into this hole. Upward on the back side of that is our oil pump. So here is your oil pump. It's a gear drive. Uh, this shaft here, this is your oil pump drive shaft. Notice the cutout here. This ties into the crankshaft. So I'll go over to the crankshaft here. So here's the engine crankshaft. On the back side of the crank gear, this drives the gear train but this notice the shape of that matches the oil pump drive so the crankshaft is turning your oil pump so anytime the engines running you're turning your oil pump can't go back to that so on this side oil is sucked as the engine crank turns that turns this creates a suction pulls the oil up into this chamber from the sump and then into these ga these lines here, which we saw on the other side. Goes to here to the pressure port. And also this side is the oil cooler. So if the vernotherm is open, heat has caused it to expand. That causes, that opens it, causes oil to go through the oil cooler and then back into here and then to start over cold it doesn't go this direction it just goes that way okay so from here is that drive shaft so that connects it to the crankshaft from there it goes to a pressure line which usually goes to a gauge and then it goes to this hole this hole ties into the crankcase half so go over here to the crankcase so here's the back of the crankcase. Here's the front. 
propeller would be on this end. So this opening, let me back up here so I can see it, right there. This is the top of the engine, this is the bottom engine. Goes in there, into this hole. From here it can go two places. Well, actually it's one place first. Goes through that hole. That comes across into here. This is your oil pressure regulator. Notice there's two holes, one there, one there. Oil that doesn't go into the engine, meaning the pressure system, bypasses the regulator, goes into this hole, which just goes straight down on the back side of the sump here, or the case, and ultimately just drips back, pours right back into the sump there. Oil that goes to the system for lubrication, the pressurized oil, goes back through this header panel, or header rail, which is, if you're looking at this, is accessible through this pipe fitting. So that's where the oil is fed. This is capped, but this is the hole that they use to machine that oil feed tube, or that header panel. So that gets a pipe plug during assembly. We'll cap that. Uh, if you don't put this in, your engine will have very low oil pressure, if at all. So from there, pressurized oil goes into that hole, goes to the header, the header rail. That runs the length of the case halves, and it's actually on both sides. This case half, this is the front, this is the rear. So the same oil feeds this rail on the other side, right there. So oil that comes in through the, the header rail then travels up into the tappet and lifter bodies. So if we look down in that hole, let's see if I can get focused. About halfway down that tube, there's a hole right there. That's your pressure oil from the header rail, which lubricates your lifters and tappet bodies. Oil leaves, comes through that, and goes directly into your push rod. So here's a cylinder. There's the cylinder base, the cylinder, the cylinder head, the push rods. And then on this side, we've got the rocker arms, and then the valve springs, and the valves are underneath those. So the, the rocker arms push on the valve. So oil, pressure oil feeds the lifter, comes through the lifter. If we look at the push rod themselves, there's a little tiny hole in that. Oil then goes into the push rod, lubricates the push rod to the rocker arm connection. And then oil there just kind of starts puking out all over here. And then that goes into, splashes down onto the rocker toe and the, the tip of the valve stem. So once it lubri the oil, lubricating oil lubricates all this, goes to the bottom of the rocker cover into this hole, which travels down into this elbow, which is external to the engine. And then from there, it's connected to a aluminum tube, which goes to these connections just below the cylinder. And then from there, that oil, and I can't see it, I got to the end. That oil comes out of those holes. So those holes just drain the oil back into the sump. So once the oil goes to the cylinders, it drain, ultimately drains to the sump of the engine. And then it starts over. So that's some oil. Uh, let's go back to this side. So oil that is fed into this header rail. So we've talked about the valve train, how it lubricates the push rods, the rocker arm, the valve, and then how it drains ultimately back to the sump through that connection. Some of the oil, goes from this header rail on this side, on the inside of the engine, to lubricate your reciprocating parts. So if you notice, we've got holes here. Uh, okay, back up. So this area, the, those bores there, that's where your camshaft sits in that connection. And down here, we've got a crank main, Crank main, crank main, crank main. 
So that oil that's up in that header rail, the header rail there comes out of these holes, lubricates your camshaft. We zoom in, so we can see that header rail in the material along here. You can see that, that hump there, that's the header rail on the other side. So it's feeding those. It's also feeding oil here. From these rails, uh, this one's easiest to see. You see this hump here, this is another board channel that goes down to the main bearings. So we have an oil port here. Rear one, oil port here. Front mid, oil port here. I have to flip through here. Front oil port here. And that's a long bearing, so there's actually another port there. So that's where it feeds the crankshaft. So from that, those openings are the mains, the journals. The oil then travels into the crankshaft through the crank bearing. And we'll zoom out here. So here's the front, there's the flange, here's the rear. This is that long bearing surface on the front, so that matches that one. And then this bearing, number, uh, number two, number three, number four, follows sequentially number two, number three, number four. So that's the orange. So the front's down there at the bottom. So the oil is fed through those bearings into these holes on the journals themselves for the mains. That, those are lubrication points for the main journal. The same oil that feeds in through those holes actually can flow through the cheeks and the throws. I don't have it disconnected on this, but that feeds the bearing surface on the connecting rods. So the same hole that's feeding these also flows through the crank into the journal for the can or the connecting rod. So these are lubricated much the same way, but they're fed from this oil. Once the oil lubricates those, this stuff's getting slung all around the engine, and it drain, you know, it hits the sides and then drains down into the sump in the back here. So if we're looking at the sump. Here's the front of the engine. This part meets up with the case half, and then this separated section in the back, that's actually the sump. So the sump bolts there, so all this oil drains that's being flung around on the inside hits the sides here, and it ultimately drains back to these points, back into the sump. And then it starts over. The back side of the engine, so that's the main stuff there. This particular insulation has a propeller governor so some of the oil that feeds comes from the header rail, rail feeds the front cam bearings that's puking out the side of the cam and then that tracks down into through the gear train into the propeller gear or the prop governor gear system so this lubrication in here that lubes these this is um, splash lubrication so the oil that's coming in through here is getting slung up in there and gets caught on those and dry, lubricates that. The inside of the cylinder, so the piston, the rings all go in this part, that's all being lubricated by splash lubrication from inside the case. Some engines have, let me change the angle, some engines actually have little injector ports on the side that squirt oil actively up into the cylinder. This engine does not have that. So it may have, if it has an oil injector there, that job is to squirt pressure oil up inside the cylinder for cylinder lubrication. This engine is old enough where it relies solely on splash lubrication from the piston going in and out of the cylinder and just kind of catching it and being slung up and down inside the jug. So that's how the cylinder is lubricated. When it's done, remember inside the, the cylinder, the job of the piston and the rings is to keep, at least the oil rings, is to keep oil on this side of the cylinder so it stays towards the sump. When your rings start wearing out, oil that's splashed up from in here is allowed to travel past the rings and up into the combustion chamber. And then you get compression losses and excess carbon and stuff like that. So the control rings on the oil, or the oil controlling on the piston, its job is to keep that oil that side of the engine so it stays going down into the sump.
Um, on the back side where the accessory case is, depending on the type of gears and stuff you have, some of these accessories are lubricated through ports that connect into these journals as well. So depending on what type of accessories you have, whether it's fuel pump arms or magneto drive gears or whatever, it'll squirt onto this and then it tracks around through all the gear train through splash lubrication. So usually they'll only lubricate it at a point here and then uh, uh, this the combination of the surface friction, the oil, and the spinning, the rotating parts grabs that oil and pulls it and moves it around the gear train on the back side of the engine. Once it lubricates that, a lot of that stuff just splashes down in the back here. And the back is where the sump attaches. So the stuff that's being lubricated in the cylinders all ends up in this area, back in the sump. And then the cycle starts over back through that screen. And that's a day in the life of lubricating oil.